which state has the most streets? Rhode Island. Today, I'm going to recap a 1998 action thriller film called U.S. Marshals. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. The film opens with closed-circuit television footage of an exchange between two men taking place in a parking garage, which appears to be foiled by agents of the U.S. State Department, Diplomatic Security Service, DSS. The two agents appear to be shot and killed by one of the two men making the meeting. The scene cuts to Chicago, where a tow truck driver named Mark Warren is driving down highway while he returns a car to an impound lot. He suddenly has to swerve to avoid a distracted driver and loses control of his truck. The truck crashes through several construction barriers, then is launched into the air and turned over its side as it skids into an intersection. Warren survives, although his left arm is broken in the accident. Within minutes, the police and the fire department arrive to extricate Warren from the truck. While Warren is being carted away in an ambulance, a firefighter makes an unusual discovery. A gun stashed inside the truck, velcroed underneath the dashboard. We cut to a south side neighborhood where a group of U.S. Marshals, led by Deputy Marshal Samuel Gerard, along with his team, comprised of Cosmo Renfro, Bobby Biggs, Noah Newman, and Savannah Cooper, are staking out an apartment building where they believe two fugitive brothers, Michael and Greg Conroy, who escaped from a Tennessee state prison, are hiding with their girlfriends. Gerard is stationed on a street corner, disguised as a chicken mascot, offering free samples to passerby while advertising his food truck parked on the corner. Biggs is stationed nearby, disguised as a construction worker, as is Renfro. Newman and Cooper are stationed behind the building. He watches as the fugitive brothers and their girlfriends climb out of the car and head inside with groceries. Once they're inside, he starts walking towards the building, removing his chicken feet and head, and producing his pistol, and is joined by Biggs and Renfro. They advance up to the front door of the suspected hideout. On Jared's signal, Biggs smashes the door open with a sledgehammer. Biggs and Renfro immediately draw their guns on Michael, who immediately fights back as they try to secure handcuffs on him. Jared gets attacked by the girlfriends when they try to intervene, but he manages to overpower both of them. Greg Conroy attempts to flee out the back door, only for Newman and Cooper to burst in and pin him to the wall. His infant son starts crying and he immediately makes a move for the baby's crib, ostensibly to comfort it. However, Newman shoots him in the shoulder as he tries to draw a shotgun. Jared picks up the shotgun and manages to use it to briefly hold Michael, who's been trying to fight off Renfro and Biggs this full time at bay. Renfro starts to secure the handcuffs on Michael, who suddenly yells in pain and bites Biggs' left shoulder, forcing Jared to crack him over the head with the butt of the shotgun. Jared and his men later celebrate the arrest of the Conroy brothers at a bar as they watch a newscast of the brothers being led to the courthouse in handcuffs. Both brothers have made excessive force complaints against Gerard with Michael having required 27 stitches after Jared struck him with a shotgun. Meanwhile, Mark Warren is taken to Chicago Memorial Hospital, where his left arm is put in a cast and he is given a neck brace as support. His girlfriend Marie is there waiting to pick him up when he's released, as she pays for Warren's bill in cash. One of the police officers from the scene of the accident is also there, ready to pick up Warren on an illegal gun possession charge due to the gun found in the truck. The moment Warren is released from the hospital, the Chicago police immediately arrest Warren and take him into custody. Warren is taken to an interrogation room, where three detectives show up to question him. The lead detective informs Warren that there's been a slight discrepancy. His name flags a white man with long hair. When asked if he's aware of the strict gun law Chicago imposes, Warren dismisses it by asking, you ever tried towing a car on the Dan Ryan at 3 o'clock in the morning without a handgun? The detective then asks Warren if he's ever been to East 42nd Street and 1st Avenue in New York City, the scene of a brutal double homicide the previous December. Warren denies it, but the detective then reveals that Warren's fingerprints flagged him as Mark Roberts, the man wanted on a federal arrest warrant for the murders, and his prints were found at the crime scene. Warren immediately demands to talk to a lawyer and has to be restrained by the other two detectives, which as it turns out is a ploy as he uses the distraction to snap the glasses frames belonging to the lead detective. That evening, Jared attends a party with his date, newscaster Stashabella. In actuality, he is attending because he's been summoned by his boss, Marshal Catherine Walsh. Walsh reprimands Jared for his actions during the arrest of the Conroy brothers, since the brothers are accusing Jared of police brutality. As discipline and damage control, 
she orders him to personally escort the Conroys back to Tennessee on a federal prison transport plane. Jared reports that night to the airfield where the prison transport plane is awaiting departure. Several prisoners are loaded onto the aircraft, including the Conroy brothers and Mark Roberts. Once on board, each prisoner is buckled in by a guard, with additional shackles being used to secure their legs to the floor. Around midnight, the aircraft takes off, headed first for Memphis, then for New York City. The flight is uneventful until about 20 minutes prior to landing when Vincent Ling, a Chinese mob assassin being returned to prison after losing an appeal, suddenly asks to use the lavatory. One of the guards releases the leg shackles on Ling's feet and walks him back to the toilet. Ling sits down and pretends to use the toilet. In actuality, the toilet trip is a ruse for him to grab a zip gun disguised as a ballpoint pen that's been planted inside a roll of toilet paper. While that's happening, Roberts begins to use the piece of glass's frame, which he's smuggled on inside his plaster cast to pick at his handcuffs. As Ling is being escorted back to his seat, he produces the zip gun and tries to shoot Roberts. However, Roberts deflects the aim and the bullet pierces a window, causing an explosive decompression that sucks Ling and a prison guard out of the plane. The plane immediately goes into a dive as the pilots struggle to regain control of the plane. They are forced to ditch the plane on a narrow country road, somewhere in Kentucky. The plane touches down smoothly, but then the left wing clips a row of power line poles and eventually breaks off. What's left of the plane then rolls off the road and down a hill in the river, where it comes to a rest upside down. As survivors are evacuated, Roberts escapes into the night. Jared issues a manhunt for the escapee. DSS Director Bertram Lamb assigns DSS Special Agent John Royce to join Jared's team. Jared inspects Royce's firearm and dismissively insists Royce replace it with a Glock. Roberts is tracked by the team to a swamp, where he takes Royce's gun and shoots Jared with it, who is wearing a bulletproof vest, allowing him to escape. After traveling to New York City and securing money, weapons, and fake identification, Roberts tails Chinese diplomat Zhang Chen, the other man from the parking garage. In Chicago, Jaron and the marshals pursue several leads, including Roberts' girlfriend Marie. Roberts secretly contacts Marie to explain that he secretly worked for the government and was ambushed during a routine exchange, killing the men before realizing they were DSS agents. The marshals track the airplane mechanic who was bribed to hide the zip gun and discover that he has been murdered by Chen. Jared acquires the surveillance footage of the murders and finds Roberts killed the agents in self-defense and was wearing gloves, thus could not have been identified by fingerprints at the scene as Lamb claimed. Lamb admits that Roberts is in fact Mark Sheridan, a former Force Recon Marine, working as an unofficial operative for the government, whom they believe is a mole within the U.S. State Department, selling covert secrets to China. The agents were tailing Chen, a Chinese intelligence agent who was the mole's contact, but when they tried to intercept the exchange, Sheridan killed them and fled. Eventually, Gerard and his team catch up with Sheridan in Queens Hill Cemetery as he ambushes DSS Special Agent Frank Barrows, who conspired with the mole to frame Sheridan by duping him into making the exchange. As Sheridan holds Barrows hostage to clear his name, Chen inadvertently kills Barrows while trying to shoot Sheridan. Chen is apprehended. While Sheridan flees to a retirement home, followed by Gerard Royce and Marshal Noah Newman. During a struggle, Royce disarms Sheridan and holds him at gunpoint. Before Royce can kill Sheridan, Newman walks into the room and Royce shoot him, giving Sheridan the opportunity to escape off the roof and onto a moving subway. Royce claims Sheridan shot Newman, who dies before he can reveal the truth. A vengeful Jared abandons his team, taking Royce along as they track Sheridan to a loading dock in Bayonne, New Jersey, where he is stowing away on a freighter bound for Canada. Jared confronts, fights, and nearly kills Sheridan, but lets his guard down, enabling Sheridan to get the upper hand. Royce fires his new Glock at Sheridan, hitting him in the shoulder, who is taken into custody. At the hospital, Jared recognizes the gun that killed Newman as Royce's old firearm. Royce goes into Sheridan's room and admits he is the mole, giving Sheridan a knife to make his intended murder appear as self-defense. Jared walks in and confronts Royce about killing Newman. Royce tries to shoot Jared for catching him in the act, like before, but Jared had emptied Royce's Glock beforehand. When Royce attempts to draw on his backup firearm, Jared shoots and kills him first. Sheridan is publicly exonerated at a government hearing and makes peace with Gerard who gives his team a backhanded apology 
before they depart to honor Newman's memory. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.